What's up everybody? So in this video we're going to be talking about, we're going to be comparing between oogenesis and spermatogenesis, right? Spermatogenesis, the process of making sperm, and oogenesis, the process of making this egg. I made a video separately on oogenesis and also on spermatogenesis, so really go check those out if you have not. This is just going to be a brief comparison because they love to ask this question. What is the difference between oogenesis and spermatogenesis? What are the similarities? They love to ask this, trust me. They ask this question more than they ask the process of describing spermatogenesis or describing oogenesis. They're always going to ask you to compare and contrast them, okay? So believe me in this. So let's get started. I have this great table where I'm going to put in everything and reveal and I have this great diagram which will help to illustrate all of this. So let's just get started. Um, let's start with differences. I think differences are way easier. So we're going to start with those and then we'll go to the similarities. So let's start off with this. This side of the diagram here will be spermatogenesis, the simplified diagram, and this side here will be oogenesis, okay? So what's one key difference that we know? One very obvious one is that spermatogenesis happens in the testes, the balls, and oogenesis happens in the ovaries of the female, right? So that's one difference. Spermatogenesis, testes, there. What's the next one? One other key one is during spermatogenesis, from one stem cell, from one spermatogonium, when we do the full process, we produce four spermatozoa, four mature sperm, okay? So that's one key thing. Whereas in a female, from this ugonium or the stem cell, we only produce one mature egg cell. The rest are just polar bodies, right? During one menstrual cycle, a female only releases one egg. That's why typically during one month, it's only possible to make one baby, right? That's why only one egg is released. Imagine if you release four, that would mean you can make four babies, right? At once. So one key that's one key difference. Spermatogenesis makes four mature sperm. Oogenesis makes one, okay? Let's reveal that. Okay, what's next? Um, this is an obvious one. So you know, okay, if we have the, this is the female reproductive system. So we, let's slice it open so we can see. And this is the male. So if we know that, um, for let's go male. Male, it's made here, right, in the sperm. And let's say it's made, and it, what happens then? It gets released into this duct, right? And it goes and it goes, and eventually um, it gets released through the penis, right? This is called ejaculation. This is how sperm is released. Whereas in a female, sperm isn't released out of the body. Rather, it is released into this fallopian tube and it waits here for sperm. So the way in which they're released are different. Sperm is released out of the body through ejaculation, whereas um, the egg is released by ovulation in a female. Okay, so that's another key difference. So ejaculation, ovulation. Okay, now let's go back here. So a key one that I like to think about is this. For a boy, for a male, when do you start making sperm? Do you think you start making sperm when you're a two-year-old boy? No, right? You cannot make sperm as a two-year-old boy. Spermatogenesis starts at puberty, starts at puberty from the age of like 12 or whatever. It depends on the person, right? Whereas for a female, this cycle actually begins before puberty. In fact, it begins while the, while the girl is inside the mom still during the fetus stage. So really, really, even before she's born, it starts. But it doesn't complete before she's born. The cycle kind of stops around here. So this line that I drew here, all of this here happens before puberty. And then this stuff here happens after the girl reaches puberty. So that's one other difference. Spermatogenesis happens, the whole process starts at puberty. Whereas in, in oogenesis, some of the process starts before puberty, okay, in the fetus stage. Okay, now, another key one, this is cool. Um, males can make sperm their entire life. You can make sperm as a 70, 80-year-old man. It's possible. Whereas for a female, you know there's something called menopause, which is a phase of life when females are infertile. They cannot make eggs anymore, right? Um, that's because... Females have a set amount of eggs that they create during their fetus stage. Remember I said before puberty, you make a lot of these eggs. The process already starts. But, when, but after a baby is born, they don't make any more eggs. The egg number is set and it starts declining over their age, over time. So they don't make any more. Therefore, they in fact um, don't make eggs their whole life. It stops at menopause. Okay? They cannot make any more eggs because they ran out of stem cells. They have a certain amount of stem cells when they're born, and then it gets used up as they make eggs every month, and some of them die out and stuff like that. 
but it stops at menopause because they, that's the time when they ran out of eggs, whereas males consistently make new eggs. I make, make new sperm. So lifelong and stops at menopause. Okay, now what's another one? This one is kind of similar. So males consistently, um, consistently make sperm. Like every minute of every day, they're in the process of making sperm, right? So it happens continuously, consistently. Whereas for a female, it happens on a monthly cycle. So they, have a, they don't make it every single minute of the day, okay? They have a cycle. They make one every menstrual cycle, whereas males make sperm constantly, the whole time. Every minute you're making some, whereas a female makes one every cycle. So it, it happening on a cycle basis, okay? This one is um, also pretty unique, okay? Now, let's go to this one. Remember that spermatogenesis, like I said, happens continuously. There's no pausing, there's no stopping in the meiosis. It just happens freely and smoothly. Whereas for females, there is there, there is two pauses. One, right here. Remember I said this whole part is before puberty. So right this part, what's going to happen is this primary oocyte before puberty is going to start meiosis, but it's not going to complete it. It's going to stop in prophase one for a very long time. Okay, it's going to stop there for a very long time. It's going to stop there and go through a whole bunch of other phases while it's still in prophase one. Okay, so it has a break. The meiosis doesn't continue. It stops for a while in this phase. Okay, and then later on, eventually, it does divide, producing the secondary oocyte. And then again, the secondary oocyte will start meiosis too, but it will stop in metaphase two. So it will not complete it for a while. In fact, it doesn't complete it until fertilization happens. So that's unique. Spermatogenesis is continuous, no breaks in meiosis, it's continuous. Whereas for female, it actually stops twice during prophase one for a while and metaphase two for a while, okay? And you'll understand that better if you watch my video on eugenesis, okay? So that's another key difference. No breaks in meiosis, yes breaks in meiosis. Okay, last one for the differences here, and this one is also quite easy. Look at this picture here. We have one stem cell, right? And we make four equally sized sperm cells, right? So that's one key thing. All the divisions are equal. All the cells are equal in size. Look here. When we the process gets carried out, we produce a secondary oocyte. And then the other thing is called a polar body. It is way smaller, way smaller than this one. So the division of the cells is unequal in size. So again, then when this one divides into two, one will be way smaller, the polar body, compared to the other cell. So we call this the division is unequal. They do not produce equal sized cells. So a fancier way of saying that is in a male, there's equal cytokinesis. Cytokinesis just means splitting of the cell. So there's equal size cytokinesis. When a female, it's unequal. The cells may be different in size. Okay, so that's not too bad for the differences, right? Most of them are straightforward. And again, there's so many. Just remember majority of these and you can get full marks on your test. Trust me. Let's go to the similarities because similarities, you need to know some of these. So what are some similarities? They're pretty obvious if we look at this picture. Both processes involve mitosis. We have this, this stem cell that needs to go undergo meiosis, I mean mitosis, to produce many, 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 many of them. Why? Because we need many of them so we can make many sperm. If we just have one, um, one um, stem cell, then we can only make four of them. But we need to make millions and millions, right? So mitosis happens where these um, stem cells divide and divide and divide so we can have a big buildup of these stem cells. Same with the egg cells, right? They divide and divide to make many of them. So we have the potential to create many egg cells, okay? So both of them involve mitosis. And again, another that's one of them. Another obvious one is they both involve meiosis, right? They both involve the process of causing differentiation. What is that? Differentiation is the process of turning a stem cell, which is a non-specific cell. It's like being a baby. A baby has the potential to become a superstar or homeless, right? Or or happy or sad or anything, right? So that's the same thing here. These stem cells are going to differentiate so into this specific cell. Same thing on this side. So both processes involve mitosis and meiosis and the process of differentiation. Now, in addition to this, throughout this process, there is growth. These cells get bigger and bigger and bigger. It's not clear on this diagram because um, it wouldn't fit, but in reality, these cells grow, so there is growth during this process. That's another similarity. Now, the last one is 
notice how I put a two in here. These are these nucleuses are diploid. If you don't know what that means, um, I don't. In this video, I will not explain it. So go check out my oogenesis and spermatogenesis video. But both of these processes turn a sper um, a stem cell that is diploid, so having the normal amount of DNA. All right, give me one second. Um, that is diploid into a cell that is haploid or has n n amount. Um, so half, uh, half the amount of DNA, because that's what's unique about gametes, right? They have half the amount of normal DNA, whereas the normal cells have 2N and N. So that's another key difference, and I'll quickly reveal that here for you. So both involve production of haploid cells, as I just mentioned. Both begin of mitosis, both have cell growth, and both are differentiation processes. If you know this table, that is all you need to know. Obviously, maybe you can think of many other differences and similarities. That's true, you can. But this is what I'm giving you, and this is what the IB wants you to know. And again, just believe in the IB, do what the IB wants, and this is all you need to know. You can mention other ones. Maybe they'll, you'll be lucky and they give you a point, but just listen to what the IB wants. I'm giving you what the IB cares about, and I can show you that in this IB question. Here's an IB question. Compare the processes of spermatogenesis and eugenesis, eight marks, here, is the, here are the similarities, and it's very similar to what I gave you because I read the book and I'm trying to teach it from the book, and you can see it's so similar. And here is all the differences. Notice here, eight marks. How many options are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 12 things. So there's 12 options. You need to put eight. So if you cannot remember everything, like I said, that's not important. Remember the majority. If you can remember eight of these 12s, that's four marks to you, okay? So I hope this video helped, and good luck to you.